Hello everyone! This is a walkthrough of Resident Evil 2 Remake's Onintofu scenario. This is Nighthawk. Come in, Alpha. Alpha, do you read? Hang on in! Man, I thought you were all wiped out. I've been trying to... Oh. Guess there's no keeping down the Grim Reaper. Huh? Oh my god! Ah. Relax, Mr. Reaper. I'm headed toward the front gate of RPD. Pick you up there. Ah, come with me! So. Onintofu is basically the revolver ocelot of the crew. It is also the hardest tofu to play because there are no defense items and you only have a couple of puny pistols. Now you'd think, well, he's got guns, so surely a long range weapon is better than a short range weapon, right? Wrong. Very, very wrong. I mean, in either occasion, you're going to wind up taking damage without some kind of crowd control or some kind of option for taking out enemies quickly which is the only reason why you're able to do many of the other tofu characters no damage to begin with but because you have no grab immunity either it means that uh, taking no damage in this is next to impossible so you have to be very strategic about where you're going to take damage if you're going to take damage so the two weapons that uh, Onin Tofu can use are Leon's uh, M1911 and uh, Claire's Ruger. Both are 45s, so they're pretty good against zombies for the most part. But you still have to be very judici judicious in your use of ammo. I'm gonna try and poke these guys, make sure they're down. But we have to set this room up so that we can uh, get all the dogs in the next room all together and start taking them all out one at a time. In general, the Colt Single Action Army is uh, probably better. Or sorry, the Ruger or whatever it is. Whatever, the revolver is better for uh, taking out some of the uh, some of the tougher enemies because it does deal pretty quick DPS. It's not like fast and instantaneous, but it's still pretty quick. So if you need something taken out quick, that's your option. The only caveat is slow reload. So now we gotta take out these dogs. Try and get them all try and get them all grouped up together. But we just kind of to cheese these dogs around the door. I have no idea where that dog went. What the hell? Oh, there he is. Okay, I take that back. So he actually does have knives as defense items, but it's only like, what, one knife? Yeah, one knife. So you still gotta be really judicious about using that knife. And just use it exclusively for if you get hit by accident. But just like try not to. Pretty sure I actually did not mean to take a hit there, but it happens. It 
If you shoot a zombie's leg off while it's in the water, then it'll die. Like, it'll just straight up die. Now we should be all set to dodge these guys. I would like my knife back, please, sir. Thank you. We still got plenty of healing items, though. Just gotta be pretty careful in that regard. It's kind of difficult to tell whether the uh, whether the revolver or the 45 might be the better option. Actually, I think the uh, the 45 is better for uh, shooting the uh, shooting the big guy. And the little guys he spits out, we just use the uh, we just use the uh, M1911 core. Baiting him into a tackle, so now that he's tackled, we can uh, run straight around him because when he comes back out of the water, he actually uh, we're actually completely unfazed. Our knife is gone, so now all we got left is uh, healing items. You gotta be real careful not to get poisoned. Fortunately, the only thing that can poison us is uh, G embryos at all, so. There's only maybe one or two more G embryos that we actually have to deal with. But in general, the best policy for individual zombies is to try to stun them, otherwise we want to shoot. So I mentioned this strat in a previous video before. We can just go right here, and the liquor will not follow us after a certain period. So we're free to just uh, cheese him while he tethers his way back to his spawn point. Then we can just run right through everything else. M1911, probably going to be the best option for this, but you can see I uh, kited the dogs out of the room before the zombies could aggro. Then we can just dodge right through the others. Some shots in the leg. They didn't always work, unfortunately. get my bearings back. The grab immunity was just enough for us to be able to get our get our bearings and get out of the room. Next up, Mr. X. 
We don't have any flashbangs or anything this time, so we gotta rely on grab immunity in order to get around. Man, that was really... That was really distracting. Anyway. I'm also not the best at dodging Mr. X, so I have no idea what uh, exactly what frame you need to back off on in order to be able to dodge in there. Which is kind of a pain in the ass. So then we're going to combine all three of these in order to get our uh, in order to get our health buff and also our grab immunity. We still got plenty of health in order to be able to tank most everything that we need to tank. Heads up. The guys at the top just ordered a full cleanup on Raccoon City. So move fast or you can kiss your ass goodbye. And we're going to walk over here so that we don't aggro the liquor. When we get to the other uh, columns over here, we're just going to go up this way. We actually had Mr. X save us there for a second. Not bad, not bad. We still got about a minute or so on our uh, defense buff to spare. Stun these guys, run around them. So as long as we don't get uh, chain hit plus grabbed or anything like that, we're fine. We're solid. We can just run through everything just about. We're going to have to get grabbed in a few places. There's not nearly enough ammo in our inventory to be able to clear the whole thing without taking a hit. It might be possible if you just juggled between Mr. X and killing zombies. Probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But then there's rooms like this where you would have zombies spawn behind you too, so... You might as well just go for the dodge. Not that it really matters, because we have a health buff, we still have plenty of green herbs left, we're at full HP. So we're just free to plow right through as we need to. Walk around the liquor, run up the stairs. Lickers can't climb stairs. Pop the zombie in the leg, pop the zombie in the foot. Popping the zombie in the foot is generally going to, um, is generally going to be the uh, more likely way to get a stun off whenever you need to run around them. And walk around these guys here too. So we're going to heal and get ready for the uh, for the potential run killer over here. We can't get poisoned by the G-Embryo over here, so if we get grabbed, it's not that big of a deal, I suppose. But we still got to worry about the... Uh, we still got to worry about the Groot over here. And uh, I got grabbed by two zombies as opposed to the Groot. So we have grab immunity from the Groot. The Groot can't spin us around and kill us. We just run right through. We lucked out. Perfect. At this point, we just gotta do the same. Just uh, stun this guy so we can run around him. Just stun, run around all of them, actually. And it worked. So that was Anin Tofu. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, like, comment, and subscribe. Twitch.tv slash SDA, Patreon.com slash SDA. If you want to pay for my bad speedrunning habit, $1 a month gets you early access to, meet the to all of my videos as they are completed. I will not be doing the Ghost Survivor scenarios once again. They just weren't that fun. So that's it for Resident Evil 2 Remake walkthroughs. Until the next series, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.